All right, so what I'm going to do today is um, give you a walk you through a chapter on the vapor pressure from the Himmelblom Drake book. Um, just going to give you the quick highlights of what vapor pressure is to try to make sure everyone's on the same page on this. Um, we're not going to spend as much time on this this semester as I have in the past, so hopefully this will help. Okay, so this is chapter 17 from Himmelblau and Riggs, 7th edition. And it's entitled Two Phase Gas Liquid Systems. And in parentheses, it says saturation, condensation, and vaporization. So essentially, those are all big fancy words for talking about situations where you have both liquids and vapors or gases present in the same system, which is a lot, comes up a lot. Um, so I think the key. Thing, the key word to know is what it means to be a saturated gas. So here I'm highlighting that term. Um, and a saturated gas is sort of defined here where it says, saturation is when any non-condensable gas comes in contact with a liquid, the gas will acquire molecules from the liquid. If contact is maintained for a sufficient period of time, Vaporization continues until equilibrium is obtained, at which time the partial pressure of the vapor in the gas will equal the vapor pressure of the liquid at the temperature of the system. So that is really the key here. Um, basically, things evaporate, and what they are evaporating, the amount that can evaporate is limited by their physical properties. And it's primarily, other than the fact that it's a function of their physical properties, it's primarily a function of the temperature. So for example, if you have a bottle of water and you close the lid on it, within a few minutes, the water that is in, the, the liquid water that's in your bottle will evaporate. And some of it will remain in vapor form most of it will remain in liquid form. How much water can be in vapor form in that bottle is a function of the temperature. It can only reach a certain maximum amount. That maximum amount is called the vapor pressure. Okay, so it doesn't mean that, let's say you have a bottle of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, that you have reached, that the partial pressure of the water has reached vapor pressure, it takes time for that to happen, but if you let it sit there long enough, the partial pressure of the water will eventually equal to its vapor pressure. Quick review on partial pressure. For example, that is the amount of pressure that's exerted due to a specific component of the gas phase. So for example, the air that's around us, we generally assume it's 21% um, oxygen and 79% nitrogen. So if we are, if the total pressure is equal to one atmosphere, then the partial pressure of nitrogen is going to be 0 0.79 atmospheres. So it's kind of like, and the partial pressure of oxygen is 0 0.21 atmospheres. So it's, 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 in essence, if you had a constant volume filled with air and you could somehow remove all the nitrogen mo molecules from it, the pressure in that constant volume system would now be 0 0.21 atmospheres instead of one. So back to vapor pressure, if you take that bottle of water and you open it and it's exposed to atmosphere, and let's say it's very dry out, so the air that is in the bottle now is pretty much just oxygen and nitrogen, you now close the lid on that bottle of water and let the liquid water evaporate. At some point, the pressure uh, in that system is going to go up because you're still going to have one atmosphere of pressure of nitrogen and oxygen. But in addition to that, some of the liquid is going to evaporate into water, vapor, and eventually it'll reach a vapor pressure of water at whatever temperature you're at. And so the total pressure of the system will be higher. So to give you an example of that, I'm going to go to a graphical example of that is shown right here. Um, and I was sort of describing a situation which is illustrated here by this graph. So at time zero, um, we have 760 
millimeters of mercury, so that's one atmosphere, and pretend that that's air. And then as time goes on, eventually um, some of the water will evaporate and from the liquid phase into the vapor phase, and that water vapor will also exert pressure. So in this case, it would be equivalent to 26.2 millimeters of mercury. It's due to the water vapor, if that's what it was. I think it is actually a vaporization of water. And the rest of it is due to nitrogen and oxygen. That's really it. It's the basic concept of saturation. The system is saturated if the thing that's evaporating has reached its maximum possible pressure. So perhaps it would help if we review. Okay, here's, here's some ways to describe it mathematically. And I think really the main thing that you have to remember is right here. They have a lot of equations here. But essentially, here's the key point. And that is that the mole fraction of water vapor is equal to its partial pressure divided by the total pressure. That's true for any gas, right? Well, when you saturate it, if you are saturated, if the system is saturated, then the partial pressure of water is going to equal to the vapor pressure. We indicate that by a little asterisk of water at whatever temperature you're at. Okay, so that is really it. All right, so that concludes our short introduction on the vapor pressure concept. I hope it was helpful to you. Um, again, the main point, the main takeaway point here is that when we're dealing with problems that involve something that exists both as a liquid and a vapor, such as water is often the, what we're dealing with in this class, um, you can use the concept that of vapor pressure to help you solve these problems. Um, because what it does is, if you know that you're at a particular temperature, you know that that compound can only exert it at the very most, it can have a partial pressure equal to its vapor pressure. So if the system is saturated, which means that the liquid and vapor phase of the compound have had time to reach equilibrium, then you can infer that the partial pressure of that compound is equal to its vapor pressure, um, which again is a function of the temperature. So just as a simple example, if you have a a bottle of drinking water that's half full sitting on your desk and the cap is closed and you're at room temperatures to 25 degrees Celsius and it's been sitting there for a while that you can you can infer you know that the partial pressure of water vapor in that bottle is equal to its vapor pressure of water at room temperature which happens to be 24 millimeters mercury so if the pressure inside that bottle is one atmosphere or 760 millimeters mercury then you know that the mole fraction of water vapor in there is equal to 24 millimeters mercury divided by 760 millimeters mercury, which is about 0.03. The reason why you know that is you're assuming that the partial pressure of water, since it has reached equilibrium and now the system is saturated, the partial pressure of water is equal to the vapor pressure of water at room temperature. And you should know that the mole fraction of a gas is equal to the partial pressure of that gas divided by the total pressure. So those concepts in combination uh, in a situation like that, you can figure out what the mole fraction of water vapor was in the bottle, for example. Now, a more physiological relevant application of the vapor, vapor pressure concept is breathing. Um, we breathe in air that is, doesn't really have that much water vapor in it, um, but when you breathe it out, it's saturated with water. And it's at about 37 degrees Celsius. So you can use that information to figure out, uh, using, again, the principles of molar mass balances, you can figure out how much water you actually lose from your body simply by breathing. And you can also figure out how much energy we lose simply by breathing. Um, and so we will work on problems like that in the coming weeks. So if this isn't all super clear to you right now, you're probably not alone. Um, again, uh, you will become more and more comfortable with it as we talk about it in class and as we solve problems that involve using vapor pressure. So I'll see you next time. Take care.